Basically, what I'm going to talk about is how we use the package that Walter and his team at HSPN sent to us um, to bring people together um, and how to use the data and present the data that the, the, in a way that is useful uh, to uh, set priorities and then co-design interventions. Again, in, I think it was in early in um, 2022 that HSPN uh, sent a uh, data package focused on uh, CQIP, the collaborative quality improvement uh, indicators that Walter just talked about using pop population segmentation. So uh, three uh, CQIP indicators uh, that they focused on, as Walter mentioned, were ALC days, and there were um, uh, emergency department presentation for uh, uh, mental health and addiction, and also three cancer screening uh, rates. As an um, OHD is East Toronto Health Partners or East Toronto OHD, we also received this package. So East Toronto Health Partners is a group of more than 100 uh, community, primary care, home care, hospital and uh, social service organization uh, in East Toronto that they work together to create this integrated uh, care system across East Toronto. We strive to partner with patients, family members, caregivers and community members. Um, to improve the way East Toronto residents find and get care uh, close to home. So together we serve more than 350,000 people uh, and these uh, residents live in 21 diverse neighborhoods, five of which are designated uh, neighborhood improvement areas. So what we call priority neighborhoods, um, equity seeking, equity deserving communities. So a lot of work that we do is um, what we call a neighborhood model. We focus on uh, neighborhoods and we try to use data or um, uh, and, and partner with local communities and local uh, residents to drive change within neighborhoods. We have been using, this is the earlier version of the uh, learning health system model that Walter talked about. Um, uh, we've been trying to use this concept and this framework since 2018 that I became involved with East Toronto Health Partners in, in its initiations as a PhD student. Uh, and then we were doing that by employing rapid cycles of evaluation. So we tested the idea, we had pilot programs and we tested the idea. And center uh, to this work is obviously data, qualitative data, quantitative data, internal data that we had, evaluation data that, uh, that we had. And then, so when we received the package from um, Walter's team, it was all about, we were all about, okay, if we're a learning health system, we need to use this data and we need to use this data to drive change. So it was all about, so we had the data, we need to understand it and then uh, act on it. So at first, um, the, so when um, HSPN sent the data, I was a CIHR fellow, I was tasked with presenting the data package and the deck that Walter's uh, team sent to us to different group, uh, those who are interested in data in East Toronto. Uh, so it was, it was a bit scattered first because there were a lot of people that wanted to get their hands on this data and work with it. Um, but slowly we managed to bring um, a small group of people internally or experts internally and externally together uh, so that we can um, create those workshops, co-design sessions within which we um, present the data uh, to the ETHB OHD as a whole. Uh, so we had uh, evaluation specialists, we had QI specialists, um, uh, we had patients and caregivers as partners within that a small team. Um, we quickly noticed that we need to have a focus. Um, so based on the data that we received, it was obvious to us that we, we needed to start from somewhere. So we needed to choose one indicator uh, and to to start this work with and then replicate it throughout um, uh, within our OHD, sorry. So based on the data that we received, it was obvious that we probably have a better chance to um, move things if we focused on cancer screening. Again, we had the data. Uh, we knew from Ontario and from Toronto, we knew that cancer screening rates went uh, decreased during COVID. So that was our challenge. 
Um, we received this sophisticated set of data, population segmentation data from Walter's group, and then we wanted to use it to co-design interventions. So quickly, we realized that again, that, okay, we cannot just jump into co-designing interventions because we're trying to bring people from the community um, that uh, like from different settings, from acute care, from home care, and also committee members. So different people, uh, different expertise, different background, different set of knowledge. So I thought that we need to do some level settings. So before starting co-designing anything for intervention, um, we, we, what we did was trying to do some level set, make sure that all of us speak the same language. We all have the same information, the same data. We understand what the issues are. And then after that, we can, we can do the co-design. So we created two workshops, that small team that I talked about, including patients and caregivers. And in the first workshop, I was, um, given the task of presenting, uh, the HSPN data. And honestly, it was a daunting task. Um, so it was still during COVID. The workshop was online, a whole day workshop. And we had this um, these amazing, brilliant speakers, um, the really experts in their fields. They were amazing presenters. And then it was me. I had to provide, like, present us dry data. So I um, created um, a slide deck, went to my team, they kind of didn't like it and like, okay, this is very dry. We might lose interest. Um, I uh, made changes based on their comment, but it was still not there. So I went through several uh, iterations. Uh, I got definitely the help of our patients and caregivers to make sure what I'm saying, it makes sense. Um, then at some point I, I thought maybe I need to take this out of the healthcare system and, and um, look at other industries and see how uh, they, they present data. Um, when they're dealing with with uh, diverse people in the room. And I have this hobby that we'll talk about the momentarily that exposes me to a lot of people from all walks of uh, life, and that's pickleball. So <laughs> there are some people I call pickleball uh, geriatric tennis. They will shout, they, they shall uh, remain nameless. Um, uh, but I'm, I usually show these photos to them and say, look, these are the best uh, male and female players in the world, and they're very young. In fact, the, the female um, uh, player that you see here, she's only 16. But the reality is, uh, in my community center, these are this is the scene. These are the people that I play with. I, I love them uh, very much. There is a lot of wisdom going on. Um, and there, a lot of them were high-level executive uh, people from different industries, they have a lot of experience and knowledge, and they are nice people and they're willing to share. So one one night after playing pickleball, we went out and I talk, I tried to pick their brain. They generally said the same thing that my team was saying, that I need to be brief and I need to be, uh, everything needs to be simple. But one advice kind of uh, stuck with me, and which was, how about you turn everything on its head? In other words, how about you um, you present the, the the results and the key messages first? So that led to some more research to for me to remind me what is data. So beyond the fact that it's information, it can be facts, it can be number, qualitative, quantitative. Um, after some investigation, I realized that while well, data represents people's encounters with the care system, which means that by the time that we have access to data conduct an analysis and discover trends, people have already lived through these experiences. So that gave me an idea. So I combined every, all the information that I received from my patient partners, from my community partners and my pick, pickleball group. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna tell people that I have nothing new to present because they already lived it and they already know what I'm going to present. So on the right side, I asked them why they think that we are focusing on cancer screening. They already knew the answer. I asked them who they think is most affected. Um, well, basically, they didn't go for cancer screening. The answer was like probably younger people, who those who are healthier. That was correct uh, based on the data that we were seeing. And then I asked them, because uh, um, 
one thing I forgot to tell you is that when they, when HSP provided us with data, we'd go back to them and ask for some neighborhood level data. They gave us uh, based on postal codes that we provided to them. And I did some uh, analysis uh, myself and identified neighborhoods within uh, our 21 neighborhoods that most affected. Uh, so I asked them, which neighborhoods do you think that they had uh, the most decrease in cancer screening rate? And they obviously said priority neighborhoods. So I thought, wonderful. Now we can look at the data and graphs to, to basically support your experiences. So the key principles that I tried to follow, we tried to follow is co-design, going back to the community members, ask them what we had in mind made sense to them. It was understanding the data, what data is, which is basically people's experiences, uh, tell a compelling story using data and facilitate participants to draw connections to their lived experience. And then the other piece was, understanding the approach. So the approach that Walter and his team taken was very sophisticated. I had to understand it really well to be able to simplify it and then uh, explain those complex concepts using simple visualization. So we had two workshops focused on um, basically um, level setting, giving people tools uh, on how to even do a co-design, the quality improvement tools, evaluation tools, logic models, et cetera. Um, out of these two workshops, what people said to us, what came out was like, use the knowledge and existing knowledge and expertise in the community, mainly use the community health ambassadors uh, to drive uh, the work and drive change in the neighborhood when it comes to cancer screening. Community health ambassadors are um, the community members, residents of East Toronto, who speak the same language, share the same culture, and are willing to help out their uh, the, the ro local residents. So then we had another workshop that we trained community health ambassadors about cancer screening. If they're supposed to, for example, educate um, their, the, the locals about cancer screening, basically it was a train the trainer. They need to have more information about cancer screening. And then we, um, uh, the different teams work on different um, interventions. Uh, one specific one that I want to highlight here was the Mars Innovation uh, Challenge um, that our team from uh, Fleming Den uh, uh, basically uh, won $50,000 to focus on cancer screening, reducing, sorry, increasing cancer screening, utilizing health um, um, community ambassadors and then also using technology to find people who are probably behind and need to go for cancer screening. Thank you.